Have you ever heard a wedding horror story? You know, they certainly exist, but people don't really talk about them. Well, today we are talking about wedding horror stories. I'm going to be sharing some wedding horror stories, some personal ones as well, and talk about why they're important and the four lessons you need in order to survive them. Hi there, I'm Jamie Chan, your destination wedding planning guru and designer of Joy at Mango Muse Events, the creator of Passport to Joy, the step-by-step -step online wedding planning course for couples, and the founder of Let's I Do This, intimate and virtual weddings in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I share real and honest and useful wedding planning tips, tricks, and advice you can use to help make planning your wedding easier and more joyful so you can create a wedding you love. Because let's face it, wedding planning isn't always very easy. In fact, it can be scary, downright scary, and nobody wants that. So we're bringing the joy back to wedding planning. Are you ready? Okay, so let's do this. Let's dive in here. So I've, I've been watching a lot of horror movies recently because, well, you know, it's October and Halloween's right around the corner. And you know, all the TV stations show all the associated scary and horror movies. Now, I don't have a thing for horror movies. It's not sort of like an obsession or anything of myself, but I do enjoy them because, you know, getting a little jump, a little scare every now and then is not a bad thing. But, you know, as I was watching one recently, there was a scene of a wedding and it got me thinking about wedding horrors, you know, because we focus really on the happy, right? When it comes to weddings, we focus on the love and the joy which is, you know, really the whole purpose, right? The whole reason for having a wedding is to celebrate that love and joy. But you know, what doesn't get talked about a lot are the wedding horror stories. You know, no one sits around a campfire and, you know, and I'm not say campfire, you know, both literally kind of and figuratively, no one sits around a campfire talking about wedding horror stories. You know, you're not sharing them, you know, to scare someone or freak someone out or just have some fun, right? You know, with your flashlight or whatever, you know, that just, that just doesn't happen. People talk a lot about wedding regrets, but they don't talk about wedding horror stories because they honestly, you know, don't want to talk about it. You know, they don't want to share what they potentially did wrong or, you know, the set of circumstances that perhaps led to that horror story happening. Now, I understand that completely, right? Because you don't want to focus on the bad stuff. You want to focus on the good stuff and the happy things and being married. And, you know, that's a good thing. That's what you should be focusing on. But the reality is that there are horrors. There are real wedding horrors, just like there are real, you know, ghost stories, you know? There are real wedding horrors. And while people don't, you know, like to talk about them, I'd really like to bring them kind of out of the shadows and into the light today because there are some really important lessons to be learned from wedding horror stories. Lessons that can help you as you're planning your wedding and even on your wedding day. And lessons that will really help you to survive your own potential horror story. But first, before we sort of dive into these lessons, I'd like to share some actual horror stories because there are all kinds of wedding horror stories. You know, there are some that are more minor, like let's say someone spilling red wine all over your white dress or the cake melting in just the heat and the humidity. Or maybe your flowers show up and they're all white instead of being sort of bright multicolored, right? So we kind of went over a couple of quote unquote minor ones. There are some ones that are a little more major. And so here's one, you know, your catering team that hits a deer on their way to your wedding. And in that hitting of the deer, your food goes all over the place and is trashed. Or, you know, there's the priest who keeps calling you by the wrong name for the entire ceremony. Or there's, you know, the septic system that just decides to break 
on the day of your wedding, you know, making everything smell like sewage. Okay, minor, major, and then there are some that are some wedding horror stories that are just kind of catastrophic. You know, it could be a VIP guest like, you know, a parent or a sibling or whomever who has a severe allergic reaction to the buffet, resulting in an ambulance having to be called. You know, it's booking a venue and only finding out later that while your money was taken, the venue wasn't actually booked. Or like having the entire wedding party test positive for COVID days before your wedding day. Yeah, right? Okay, now I share these wedding horror stories because they're not just examples. They're not just, you know, possible things that can happen. These actually happened. These are real wedding horror stories, all of them. Now, in some cases, it's something I've personally experienced. In others, they're horror stories that have been shared with me from someone. And I share this and I share the fact that they're real, not to scare you, not, not at all, uh, but once again, to bring the horror into the light, you know? And because here's the thing, there are some things that you just have absolutely no control over, zero control, you know, no matter how well you plan. And this includes me as well, okay? Me as a seasoned professional wedding planner with over a decade of experience. And that is really lesson number one here. It's that while horror stories can happen, you know, sometimes you just have no control over them. You know, you have no control over the weather. You have no control over someone else's behavior. You have no control over, say, a human mistake. You have no control over an accident. These things just happen. So if you end up in your own horror story, know that some things you just can't do anything about. You know, you couldn't have foreseen it or prevented it. So don't put the blame on yourself. You know, don't feel bad. It's just something that happened. Which leads me to lesson number two, which is there are some things you can control. You know, when you know what can happen, you can sort of put certain things in place or make decisions to really help prevent any wedding horror stories. But this only really comes from experience. And the experience you're looking for here is from your wedding planner. Now, there are so, so many things to love about a wedding planner. We could talk about that all day. And so many reasons why you should hire one. But really the biggest thing is that you get all of their experience, their many years of experience and their knowledge. And that is huge, huge, because it's not just about, you know, planning the right way or picking the right vendors or, you know, making the right decisions. It's about not making mistakes and being able to foresee problems based on experience and thus preventing them, preventing your horror story. Now, if you haven't thought about a wedding planner, you know, really do think about it. They're amazing for so many reasons, as I said. And you know, if you're on a tight budget, don't forget there's always Passport to Joy as well. All right, so now outside of what you can and can't control, which is what we just talked about in lesson one and two, there's also the personal aspect. Now, when I shared those wedding horror story examples, I bet there are ones that you were like, eh, that's not that big a deal. And then there might've been ones that you were like, Ugh, that's, that's pretty horrible. Am I right? It's because that, you know, what's horrifying to you isn't necessarily what's horrifying to somebody else, right? Maybe the worst case scenario for you is having someone fumble over your name. 
during the ceremony because, you know, you've had people fumbling over your name your whole life. And this one time on your wedding day, you want to be able to have your name be right when you're marrying this person that you love. You know, just this one time, you want them to get it right. Or maybe, you know, the worst scenario for you is someone having an allergic reaction because you have allergies and you've had to suffer before at events where, you know, people just weren't careful. Or maybe, you know, the worst scenario is someone ruin your, ruining your dress. And maybe not because you're prissy, but because you're kind of OCD and you like things neat. And when they're not, it's just difficult for you to concentrate or handle it. You know, which leads me to the fact that, you know, everyone is afraid of different things. Everyone has different fears and worries, their own fears and worries and situations, you know, that they find particularly scary or horrifying. So here is lesson number three, and that's, you know, instead of shying away from your fear, lean into it, lean into it. (laughs) You know, anything you're scared of or worried about or, you know, fear, is something you're going to want to pay extra special attention to. And that means planning with your fear in mind. Okay, so here's what I mean. So let's say you're worried about someone saying, you know, pronouncing your name wrong. You want to do everything within your power to make sure that doesn't happen. So what does that mean? That means maybe spending extra time with the officiant about pronunciation and making sure they had it right. Maybe it's having a friend or family member marry you instead because they'll definitely get your name right. Let's say you're worried about allergies. I'm gonna use all these examples, okay? Because we've talked about them before. So let's say you're worried about allergies, you know? Perhaps you pick a caterer who's very, very familiar with allergies. They deal with allergies all the time. That's maybe their focus, their niche. Or maybe you do a plated meal where everyone gets their own individual meal and there's a lot less chance for sort of cross-contamination and there being problems. Now, let's say your worry is that, you know, your dress is going to get dirty. Maybe you don't wear white. Maybe you don't serve red wine until after dinner. Maybe you don't wear something that's long and drags on the floor and gets dirty. Maybe you have a, like a reliable spot cleaning product, always handy. Or maybe you have a second outfit that you need, you know, you could have kind of waiting in the wings if you need to change. Or maybe you have all of those things. You see what we're doing here? So you want to lean into your fears so that you can plan accordingly. Plan to prevent those horror stories for you, your horror stories. Now, the the scary truth is that something will go wrong during, you know, your planning and on your wedding day, whether it's a horror situation or not. It's kind of something that just always happens. You know, it's it's a little inevitable. Something always goes wrong. So here's lesson number 4. And that's let go. You know, once your wedding sort of rolls around, it's really time to leave your wedding in the hands of the pros you've hired, which means your wedding vendors, and let go. You know, I'm not going to sing frozen here, but you want to let go because you need to be in the moment. That's so important. You know, not worrying about the cake or the DJ, or the best man, right? You just need to be in it to be able to savor it all because the day goes by so, so fast. I'm sure you've heard that from people. People say it all the time and they do because it's completely and utterly true. It flies by. The day flies by. And so you don't want to spend your time worrying or wondering 
if something's going to go wrong. You know, you just don't. It's not where your brain or your heart or your mind wants to be. So you want to be, once again, in it. You want to be feeling it. You want to be experiencing it with all of those people that you love. And if something, you know, does go wrong, you want to roll with it. So let your vendors handle it if needed, or just let it go and, you know, don't worry about it. You want to focus on you and your partner, your loved ones, and just how you feel, how happy you feel, because that's in the end what really matters. So the final thing I want to mention here and share is, you know, don't be afraid of the wedding horror story. Instead, learn from it. Learn from it. The things you can do to prevent your wedding horror story, do it. And the things you can't, don't worry about it. In the end, it will all be okay. Okay? All right, we're going to end this video with a question. And the question is this, what are you afraid of? What's one of your, you know, wedding horror scenarios? Let me know in a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Give us some thumbs up. You can check out our other wedding planning videos for even more tips and hit subscribe so you can get access to all the new ones. And if you're looking for help through the entire wedding planning process, including having access to a personal wedding advisor, check out Passport to Joy, my online course. You can find the links below because you deserve to enjoy your engagement no matter what your budget is and even in the middle of a pandemic. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye.